This video contains footage of welders wearing soft tops. Wearing of soft tops is acceptable on some sites, provided the risks associated with overhead hazards have been mitigated and are documented in the Project Safe Work Plan and Job Field Level Hazard Assessment. Consult your supervisor to determine the correct PPE for your job. Safety is super important at SIMS. It starts from the top. We have a really great culture where we build this culture by having a continuous conversation day in, day out on how we can actually do safety better at SIMS. When I go out into the field or do uh, like a targeted observation, it, we regularly see people not using respiratory protection and some of the excuses they use is I haven't been doing this for years or um, you know they're welding outside. Well I never have to at home or this or that but you're not at home you're on the job site we're trying to keep you safe plus get a job done. The fact is that they're, they're in close proximity to the welding fume and they need to protect themselves. Sometimes it may be laziness just going down to get it and some people just figure they're bulletproof like I used to think, uh, not anymore, I got like the wounds and scars to prove it. I'm a 359 Boilermaker, foreman, rig and boss, all different stuff, and I've been doing it for about 35 years. My dad was a Boilermaker too, so I'm second generation. And uh, I love it, it's what they do. Well, the one that got me for myself was we were working on a job. We were at we had a real big recovery boiler. Everybody there was wearing a mask but set me. And then I went to another job after, <laughs> right after that one. It, and about three days into that job, I could not get rid of a headache. I had such a bad headache. And uh, I, I took three Tylenol 3s and I just looked at it as a safety fella. And when I go, something's wrong, I got to the hospital. That one really hurt a lot. You know, they're pushing a tube up my nose and pulling it out and watching all that black stuff pulling out of, uh, or falling out of my nose and, you know, about 10 or 15 times a side until it come up over the top and it comes, you can feel it a little more, a little more, and then all of a sudden it popped. You know, I learned the hard way and, I, you know, I, even, I tell some of the young guys that because that was one of the worst things that ever hurt. There are many risks associated with not wearing the right respiratory protection. Welders who regularly breathe in fumes and dust can be prone to lung infections that can lead to pneumonia, which can be fatal in some cases. Asthma symptoms can lead to lost work. Other risks are metal fume fever, temporary reduced lung function, and even cancer. Grinding dust can cause many types of lung disease, including fibrosis, which causes lung tissue to become damaged and scarred irreversibly. Breathing metal fumes puts many welders in hospital each year. Welding fume is a solid, not a gas or vapor. Larger particles can be trapped in the nose and windpipe, but small particles can penetrate to the inner part of the lung where they are most harmful. These fumes quickly become a feathery particle that slowly drifts through the air. How long do the risks continue after the active welding work is done? It can take up to two days for particles to settle. Well, there are some studies out there, um, but the long-term effects of welding fume are not terribly well understood. But here at SIMS, we're being proactive and um, taking that evidence and um, taking it to the next level and trying to educate our workers at the same time as providing them all the necessary respiratory protective equipment so that they are not going to suffer the long-term health effects of welding fume exposure. For example, let's look at manganese. Manganese is found in virtually all steel welding electrodes and wire. Repeatedly breathing in these fumes can cause a disease called manganism. Signs and symptoms of manganism include paralysis and speech disturbances. Let's look at a very common welding rod, 7018, 
When you review the materials safety data sheet for 7018, you find the manufacturer tells us that this product is a lung irritant and can cause short-term or acute health effects. The MSDS also tells us that research groups have assessed that some materials contained in Rod 7018 are known or suspected to cause cancer and some have toxic properties. The manufacturer of this product tells us to avoid breathing the dust. The right gear ensures that you are protected from exposure and the resulting long-term effects. It's so upgraded nowadays because just the way it's, we've evolved with safety, it's comfortable as stuff. They've changed it all, they've catered to the worker guy. Safety to me is 100%. If it's not gonna be safe, we're not gonna do it. We'll always figure out a different way of doing it if it's gonna put somebody at risk. Safety is, is a culture, and we have to get people to believe in that culture. And to do that, we have to reinforce it. And the more we talk about safety, the more everybody will get it. We have a long history with our clients with safety and quality, and we want to continue on that path. We're worried about everybody on safety. You know, but you still gotta get the job done, but there's no reason anybody should be put in harm's way, right? And as employers or bosses, um, that's not what we want. We'd ra I'd rather you go home safe every night and see your what, kids or, or what have you and, uh, you know, have a good night. Our goal is to send everyone home injury and incident free back home to their loved ones every day. If anyone ever has questions or concerns about safety or what personal protective equipment to use, they should firstly see their supervisor or the superintendent or the SIMS safety specialist on site.